It is a school day, and Monica and her best friend Molly are walking through the halls between classes. They are discussing their plans for driver's ed, when suddenly, Monica complains of not feeling right. Hey, so where do you want to go for lunch? I just got my license. I can drive. You got your license? Yeah, check it out. <gasps> oh, you're so lucky. Who did you have for driver's ed? Oh, uh, I think his name was Mr. Smith. I'm taking my next month. I'm so excited. You have no idea. I already have my car picked out, the color, everything. What kind of car? Oh, Mercedes. My dad said he would get it for me. I'm nice. so excited. Oh my god. I don't feel good. What's wrong? I don't know. It's just, I have this like flushing feeling and it's just like... Are you okay? Somebody help! After Molly calls for help, an ambulance is called. The school nurse comes to assess Monica while waiting for the paramedics to arrive. Paramedics on scene assess Monica for any injury and ensure an adequate airway. They administer her a first dose of Ativan, 2.5 milligrams, before transporting her to the emergency room. Monica is then transported to Chamberlain Hospital ER. While being assessed, Monica has a second seizure where she is given a second dose of Ativan, 5 milligrams. Once stabilized, Monica is transferred to the pediatric unit on a cart. Safety is maintained. Seizure precautions were implemented, including placement of a wristband for fall precautions, placement of hospital socks, the bed was put in the lowest position with the call light within reach, and she was placed in a private room with the lights turned down in order to decrease environmental stimulation. Nurses also performed neuro checks every 30 minutes. Monica and Molly were interviewed in the ER in regards to the seizure activity that happened at school. The following information was obtained. Monica has been very tired lately with school work and cheerleading. She said she just hasn't been feeling like herself lately. She had a cold a few weeks ago, but has otherwise been healthy. Molly said Monica has also been complaining more than normal about headaches and being tired, but otherwise she hasn't noticed anything else unusual. After Monica and her mother have settled in her room, the nurse and her doctor come to the room to speak to Monica about her seizure activity.
to measure your oxygen saturation. And then I'm going to take your temperature under the tongue. During the nurse's interview with Monica, she finds out that her grandmother on her mother's side had a history of epilepsy. No other significant family history is obtained. Other than the long days at school and cheerleading, the admission assessment of Monica showed no significant information pertaining to a possible cause of the recent seizure. Notice the padding on the bed. That's just for your safety. And we have these socks here, and that just tells us that you're a fall precaution. So okay. we like to have all of our patients put them on. Okay. So we'll also do that. Okay, and then Dr. N has also ordered a heart monitor. This just tells us your heart rhythm, your rate, and your oxygen level. This is also part of your seizure precautions. The nurse finishes prepping Monica and getting her settled. Throughout the next few hours, she is taken to radiology for a CT scan and MRI, as well as an EEG. 
After the test results have come back, Dr. Agnes visits Monica to discuss the results. Hi, Monica. So I'm back. We actually received the results of all your diagnostic testing, so I'm just going to go through that with you. So your CT scan, your MRI, they showed no brain abnormalities. Everything was normal there. Um, your lab work, uh, your electrolytes, all those lab values, everything is normal as well, so there's nothing there that concerns me. The only thing that does concern me was your EEG. We did see some abnormal brain activity, and that usually signals a diagnosis of epilepsy. Okay, so what does that mean? Am I going to have seizures all the time? Well, what epilepsy is, it's a brain disorder in which the cells in your brain don't act normally as they should, and that's what causes your seizures. Um, every person is different. The brain activity varies, so some people can have more seizures, some people can have less. What we're going to do for you is we're going to put you on some medication, and we're going to hope that it will stop some of the seizure activity and bring it down. We do need for you to take the medication regularly so we can prevent them. And we'd also like to keep you here for an extra day just for observation, make sure everything's okay, get you started on the meds. Do you guys have any more questions for me? No, I think we're good. Okay. So we'd like to keep you here for another day just to observe you and get you started on your medications and all that. Do you guys have any questions for me? No, not at the moment. All right, well, I'll keep in touch. If you guys have any questions at all, don't hesitate to contact me. Okay. Thank you so much, Dr. The next day, Nurse Michelle visits Monica to do discharge teaching and provide her with information pertaining to her recent diagnosis of epilepsy. Dr. Agnes said you can go home today. I just have a couple of things to go over with you. Okay. Your discharge planning. Would this be a good time? Yeah. Yeah, that's all right. I have copies of everything for you. That way you can refer to them at home. Okay, so I'll leave those with you. Uh, first thing I need to go over is the Tegretol, the anti-seizure medication. That's what Dr. Agnes has prescribed. Okay. Okay, what this does is prevents the seizure activity in your brain. You need to take this every day at the same time. And if you miss a dose by any chance, just make sure you take that as soon as possible. Don't double up doses. Okay. And you need to avoid alcohol and drugs. Oh, she doesn't do any of that. Okay. So if any situation comes along, just remember those do potentiate seizures, so you need to avoid them when you're on the medication. Nurse Michelle also educated the patient on proper sleep and exercise schedules. She explained that regular exercise and sleep can help the patient to maintain a healthy lifestyle, which will help with a good body image, which is also important in teens with epilepsy. Getting heated during exercise can cause a seizure, so she needs to remember to take frequent breaks. While Monica doesn't need any more sleep than the average person her age, pulling late nights and not getting enough sleep can be a risk factor for a seizure. You'll also need to do blood tests every six months. Those will be checking the blood levels of the drug in your body, as well as your liver enzymes. And there are a couple side effects of the medication. Most common are dizziness, being tired, and feeling nauseated. So keep a lookout for those. And then there are additional side effects listed in your teaching. Do you have any more questions? Well, I start driver's ed in two weeks. So can I still do that? Right now, we have to hold off on driver's ed, since you recently did have a seizure. So I can't do driver's ed, I can't drive? The Illinois law states that you need to be seizure-free for six months before you can drive. So we're going to have to see how the Tegretol goes and we might need to increase dosage. And then we'll get you to a level where you don't have seizures. And then you can continue driving. Okay. I have to do driver's ed. I'm going to be a freak. No, honey, it's so okay. I know this is difficult for you. <laughs> Monica was then discharged with her mother and has a follow-up visit with the doctor in one week. One month later, Monica has been brought to the ER at Chamberlain Hospital. She is showing signs of severe depression with an apparent suicide attempt. She has tried cutting both of her wrists, which are now bandaged with gauze. Once Monica has been stabilized in the ER, she is transported to the pediatric floor for an overnight observation. 
She has been placed on one-on-one precautions so that someone is always in the room in case she tries another attempt at harming herself. In the ER assessment, Monica admits that she has been feeling very down lately because she most likely can't start driver's education in January with all the rest of her friends. She fears of having a seizure in front of all of her friends and family at any given time. On top of all that, Monica is worried about finding a boyfriend with her new diagnosis. She knows she has to tell someone she's dating that she has epilepsy, which can be embarrassing. She just doesn't want to be different from her friends. After Dr. Agnes has consulted with the psychiatrist and Nurse Michelle, the nurse comes into Monica's room to discuss the treatment plan for the depression. Okay. 